Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. Hard-headed. We're excited that you've joined us as we have a conversation. We found that a good conversation allows us to share what's on our mind, whether current events, what's grinding our gears, or our pet peeves. It also allows us to share our top three, a list of our favorite things on any given subject, most of which are highly opinionated. In closing, we share a good word. Solid friendships are encouraging. Even if we joke and give each other a hard time, our ultimate responsibility is to uplift each other. Our goal is that you'll feel like you're part of the conversation, like you were in the studio with us, and that you feel encouraged after tuning in to our podcast. It's time to join the conversation. All right. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Hard Headed as Chet opens his bag of whatever he's got today. Uh, you know, I'm a huge supporter of the WNBA, and when I saw that they had sponsored these new ruffles, <laughs> pretty sure that was a joke, folks. Because <laughs> you got that chick from that's uh, in prison from right. Russia. On the... it's, it's not. It's not. Uh, ruffles Ridge Twists. Uh, you know, I'm like, I gotta buy that. Whatever the, whatever they do here. Why don't you why don't you take a I'm sorry audience for getting something else that's crunchy. I know Troy drove us crazy on the last episode. So yeah, if you've got uh misophonia, uh, skip forward about thirty seconds. And go. Nope. I like those. That's not that bad. Is that barbecue? Barbecue S- flavor. Smoky barbecue flavor. I don't get the smoke. I got a little of the smoke. Yeah. It tastes like a uh you know those, what were Fritos those? flavor twists. Yes. They, but, these are softer. They're not as hard on your teeth. Right. They're a lot airier. There's more air in these than, than with those Fritos twists. Totally not made from potatoes. This is probably some kind of plastic that we're eating. Probably. Puffed up corn. Give you a mean poop later. But just so you know, the uh, Aja Wilson, the power forward for the Las Vegas Aces, says have the power to empower with right. ruffles ridge twists thank you wnba and ruffles ruffles used to have ridges now they're just twisty anyway today on <laughs> this episode of wherever this is going uh that's not that's not the name of our podcast <laughs> oh wherever this is going where yeah um uh, We've got our uh, top three tools every household should have, and then uh, Chet's going to bring us what's on his mind, which hopefully is not Ruffles and WNBA, and then uh, Troy's going to bring us a good word. All right. What's on my mind? Boys, you can feel it in the air. When you wake up, Matt, I know you probably don't wake up early enough to feel the cool air. Seasons are changing. But Troy, when you get up and it's 50 degrees outside – and you walk outside. What do you What do you think? I should probably go kill some ducks today. And you're like, ah, oh, fall is here, and I want to be get outside. Football is going to be on later this afternoon. So the oh, that's a Saturday, by yeah, the way. Yeah, the that's the only time you get up early. Uh, when I'm going duck hunting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I started wondering why. I had that feeling. And I'm like, man, I miss this. Like, or, you know, just like, it wasn't like, oh, I like to, I want to go hunting. It's like, I really miss getting out in the woods. And then I asked myself, why? So I ask you that same question. You don't miss it all year round or? Well, it's, you know, I mean, there's, it's, there's seasons to hunt. Yep. But, and sometimes when I'm thinking about it, it's like, ah, well, I like to hunt. But, you know, when you feel that it's just right around the corner, the temperature, then you're, it's I have a longing to get out there. It's called the rut. What? <laughs> For deer. Look, people, have, people have it too. People hunt something other than deer. <laughs> I, I get it, but it's that time of year when everything's doing its thing. I mean, and... <laughs> <laughs> so... Why? Why do you guys like to get out? Like, I mean, I know you. I know both of you do. Like, what are some of the reasons? I just enjoy being outside, and it's it's nice to come off of hot summer. But you could be outside playing golf. Yeah, Wh- but which you, but, I do. 
Yeah. Yeah, but in you know in the summer it's not as enjoyable because it's too hot. Okay. It's more enjoyable when the temperatures are cooler. You got a you got a nice cool morning. You're like, oh man, today's a great day for golf, or today's a great day to get up and and do some work on the food plots because it's 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 more enjoyable to be outside. It's not as harsh as the summer, even though I'll get out in the summer and dang near pass out doing it. But I don't pass out almost pass out doing it. Yeah. When it when that temperature changes and you're like, man, I get I get what you're saying. I just call it the rut, you know. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I was I'm digging deep here on myself. Like, why, why? Because there's other things I could be doing with my time. I thoroughly enjoy uh, being outside and being able to like enjoy more seasons than I grew up with. Yeah, yeah. That's I really like fall for for that one reason. I'd say fall is my favorite time of year. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm talking like the urge to get out and hunt, like not just fall in general. Yeah, that's the rut. Okay, <laughs> I think we've established we established that you call <laughs> wanting to go somewhere the rut. You don't, you don't come home from work, kick open the door, and bugle a little bit. And, <laughs> like, I mean, no, no, I don't. slobbering and <laughs> throwing feces on yourself. Whatever. Not quite Pee, peeing on your legs. No, I don't do oh, that. Okay. Not, not uh, not, not when I come home from work. Okay, <laughs> like, that, that's a Saturday <laughs> thing. <laughs> well, one of the reasons I like it so much is is being alone. Like I don't. There's no other time of the year where I'm alone. Really. Like I mean, there's the okay. Everybody, you know, somebody's working, and you know, w- wife grabbed one of the kids and went to the store. So you got a few hours to yourself, but not. Not like not an extended. I'm, in, I'm intentional about crawling up in a tree and being unplugged from everything, or being in a duck blind and not like I intentionally went out there to be be by myself. Or sometimes hunting with folks, that's fine too. But the solitude, um, I don't get that all year round. And I'm thinking, yeah, well, that probably means it's pretty important to me, solitude. I would say, again, like the rut, all the all the bucks, most of the year round are together. And they're and, groups. And bachelor groups. And then the rut comes along and psh, they all go off on their own. And yeah. they're by themselves. So I don't know if there's something. I don't know. Yeah, everything's coming back to deer for you right now, huh? It's deer season. <laughs> <laughs> so I read this article by Gary... McGee, not Matt Gee, McGee. So now we're just changing things. We so it's Matt Gee. I get it. <laughs> He's a <laughs> uh, former Navy intelligence specialist, but currently is a philosopher. And he wrote an article called "The Art of Solitude." And then you get to thinking about the art. That means it's practiced. It's not just a gift that people are given. It's their their practice. And he uses a quote. To start his article with by Blaise Pascal that says, all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. And I get to thinking about the my thought process when I'm alone, dedicated in alone time and not plugged into an electronic device right. watching TV, football, or golf, or whatever. That's when you kind of figure out some of the major things you need to be figuring out in life. And that if we don't intentionally create time for that and we're probably not addressing some of the things that need to be addressed in our lives i thought that was pretty interesting and so does mr mcgee um you know they're uh his you gotta you have to create room this is some of the stuff that he covers in the article you have to create room to deal with yourself like do we ever create space to actually deal with us personally or are we just like a pinball in a machine bouncing around or whatever. It's bumper. rare. It's, it's rare. I'll say that. I know a lot of people that intentionally don't have that alone time with themselves. Everybody, you know, does. No, I'm just saying, I know a lot of people that don't that, that oh, yeah. intentionally avoid because they don't want to deal with themselves with themselves. Yeah, so he, he, I'm quoting from him. <laughs> Simply put, the art of solitude is the vital ability to be alone and to allow for a deep connection with the self. Like I think a lot of times 
you know, and I, that's this the when I think about that first cool morning of the year in the fall, that oh my gosh, it's time. I think some of that glee that I have is tied to I know that in the next few months I'm going to be able to find some time to deal with myself. And not that I want to run away from everybody else, but I think I'm better after I've done that, right? I, I could connect with others better. You've had time to work some stuff out. Yeah. You're more relaxed. Decom- that time to decompress. You've, Like you said, you've thought through some things. Yeah. And you're able to take on more and handle more better because you're a better version of yourself when you come back. Because you, it gives you time like uh, the the four reasons that he gives. Number one, deeper self-consciousness. Number two, deeper eco-consciousness. Sounds fruity. I'll talk about that later. Number three, <laughs> deeper creativity. Number four, a deeper sense of freedom. So you get in that first one, deeper self-consciousness. It gives you time to account for the tor- turmoil within. Like if you don't allow time for that, you're never going to deal with it. Like what, you know, there's all, you know, the, I intended to be this kind of a person. If you're by yourself thinking for any amount of time, you kind of think, am I the person that I wanted to be? And what do I have to do to change to become that person? Or what do I need to do differently? Or what should I do more of? What should I stop doing? Those kinds of things. If you never just take a break and go through those things, you're never going to fix them. They don't just automatically fix themselves. You don't automatically correct course with some of the things you've been doing in your life. You got to think, think through it. You get into the eco consciousness. Um, this is pretty interesting, and I'm I'm not a huge Nietzsche fan, but one of his quotes is used here in the article: "Modern man has lost and destroyed his instinct and can no longer trust the quote divine animal and let go of the reins when his understanding falters and his way leads through deserts." And I think if we want to go back to your last week's, what's on your mind? A lot of the I want to elect somebody that makes all these tough choices for me that agrees with me right? is because we're giving up our ability to be, you know, our own masters as far as a divine right. animal. Like use our instincts as a, as a, as a man that's been given talents as and a gifts. sovereign human, as a sovereign being. Yeah. And be, make conscious decisions. Like we, I think we, we t- typically want to float unconsciously through there. And the eco consciousness that he gets into is is just that is that like we're part of an overall environment that that exists and we play a huge role in it as a man as mankind and then we think about that all the time and not that I'm advocating for all this but you know you look at climate change and environmentalists and all of you know we water conservation is something I'm pretty hip to. Uh, leaving a place better than it was when you found it. Uh, every time I go out and hunt on public land, I end up taking a lot of trash out of there because I'm tired of people just rutting up the place and treating it like a dumpster. We're part of a bigger bigger picture, right? It's, the world doesn't revolve around us. If you get out there and you have some solitude in the wilderness by yourself, you realize that there's more things that are going on than just you. Um, and then you get into the, the deeper creativity that's there. Um, it, it allows for creativity. If you're not if you're not making time for it, I know you talked about your business, Troy. You actually had to schedule time to to think about ways that you could grow your business as opposed to just doing your business whatever your clients want. You got to set time aside, it schedule it to say I'm going to focus on thinking of new ways to do something. I'm not just going to show up and do the same thing I've <clears> always <throat> done. You know, making room for that creativity. Uh, for that that solitude, there's a lot of professors that get paid really good money to sit there at a board and think. Yeah, in our business group that I'm in, we do a lot of deep thinking, internal thinking, to where we have to bring stuff to the table for our next meetings. Like you know, thinking about business, and but a lot of it is thinking about yourself and where you where where you want your business to go, and does it that align with who you are, what you want, what your primary focus and primary aim is going to be in your life. And are you going to be able to do that if you don't, if you don't spend time alone? No, 
absolutely not. And that creativity <laughs> part, I mean, you know, that's when I get out and I'm by myself at, at my hunting cabin, that's where I can do my best writing because everything else just kind of goes away and I can solely just concentrate on writing. Yeah. So I, I get that. I, I would, yeah, I agree with that. And then uh, the fourth and final one, a deeper sense of freedom. And the, this is Carl Jung. And I'm, again, I don't agree with everything that he says, but a quote that is used here in the article, too much of the animal distorts the civilized man, but too much civilization makes sick animals. So it kind of gets into the, the balance of if you're not out there feeding yourself as an individual with this time, then you're basically going to be imprisoned in the, the rat race, right? And, and I'll tell you, some of the solitude that was forced on everybody through COVID really had people evaluate during the lockdowns. Am I doing like, am I actually doing what I want to do with my life right now? And then you look at when things started bouncing back. There's a lot of people who are like, I'm, I'm doing something different. Yeah, I'm not coming back. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to go, I'm going to go find something else, you know? And I, I would argue that it was the solitude that allowed for that freedom to think I, I don't have to go to work in this job every day, the rest of my life, I could do something different, you know, and I'm, I'm going to take that risk. Um, so anyway, that, that's just, what's been on my mind is, you know, I just asking myself, why do I get so excited? And there's all other kind of, you know, answers to that question too. I love being able to provide good, clean, food that I know exactly where it came from. You know, that's another reason I like to hunt. I love the camaraderie, mm -hmm. especially that's one of the things that duck hunting gives you is you typically do that in a, in a group. Um, but you know, so there's a lot of things to get excited about fall or in the cool weather, but I, I really, you know, the deer stand set up in a deer stand and, and quietness, you know, waiting for a, to hear a limb crack, uh, allows your mind to churn and, I don't have a, a plethora of deer that are in a high fence area like Matt's probably. Where <laughs> it they ain't come high around, fence. He, he rings it a ain't bell. He can't. He rings a bell, and they come up. You know, at <laughs> four thirty in the afternoon. I don't have that situation, so I'm 7:30 there. Seven thirty in the morning and three forty-five in the <laughs> afternoon. You can put it on the clock. I, that's not how it is for me. So I, I I get to sit in my deer stand for hours waiting for that right moment. But um, I, I think one of the I still things, do that as well. One of the things that uh, I get excited about in hunting season is I, I get that solitude back in my my life, even though it typically only happens during this time of year. That's one of the reasons I get really excited about this time of year. Nice. I like it. I think I get excited about it more, because, like I said, because that weather's nicer and I enjoy, I enjoy being out there a little bit more. You know, but I mean, I'll get out there because I go out there throughout the year to constantly work on it, you know, and I'll be there for a day, you know, or overnight by myself, whatever, yeah. you know, that getting on the tractor and just kind of zoning out and doing what needs to be done and, you know, put on some music and just get into, get into thought. And it's been some of our good words before where, you know, it, it, Jesus even took that time and it was very important for him, you know, as mm -hmm. well. And not just getting, you know, psyching himself up, but, you know, getting with the Lord as well. Yeah. And he either did that immediately before a big ministry event well, right or after, immediately after yeah. to recharge himself yep. or himself. Yep. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks for good word, Chet. We'll be back with our top three tools. Every household. It was, it was a good word, but it was still what's on my mind. Oh, I'm sorry. It yeah. was a good word. Yeah, oh. it was. You're, you're not wrong. Multiple good words this uh, evening. Uh, Troy will provide the next one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to steer this ship. We'll be back. At Admiral's Pennant, our mission is to offer the latest and refined, high-quality masculine products and services to the modern gentleman, as well as provide him with the tools and products necessary to look, act, and feel confident in his appearance and social interactions. Check it out at admiralspennant.com. Without it, you might as well shave. All right, we're back with our top three, and top three today tools every household should have. Troy, what are your top three tools that you think every household should have? I think number three, every household should have a vacuum. That's not a tool. That's that's an appliance. Uh-huh. It is a tool that I use to 
clean up my You're a tool. kid's mess every day. I'm not a fan of your interpretation of tools. I'm going to see you, what number two is. <laughs> you know, like two weeks ago, you, you came with you came at us with one of the strongest top threes you've ever had, and now you start off with one of the weakest. It's not, it's not, it's one of the strongest top threes we've ever had. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. I can't. No, num- I can't win them every time. Number two, obviously. Yeah. You, you win some, um, you lose some. A mini screwdriver set. Like for eyeglasses, that many? Uh, for eyeglasses, kids' toys. Oh, okay. Better. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting there. That's yeah. actually something you can find in the tool section of a hardware store. <laughs> 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 I guess you could find a shop vac in the tool yeah. section, but it's not Al- the Although, end. if I were to ask somebody where their screwdrivers are, I wouldn't ask where the mini screwdrivers are. I just ask for screwdrivers. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're in the same section? Yeah. They're no, like, they're not, because I would ask my wife, hey, you got that little uh, mini screwdriver in your purse? Yeah. Because that's where she carries. You drove, oh, you drove up here in the minivan. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number one. Can't get any worse. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to? I wrote down six top three. So you want to use one of mine? No, a I just f- here's a here's fork. Here's <laughs> <laughs> a blender, oh, but a blender. It's a, a blender. It's a tool oh, to man. crush Dish, things. Yeah. Dishwasher. Every time the power goes out, I look for this, and it's a battery powered powered lantern or a flashlight. Okay, yeah, not really a tool unless you're going to club somebody over the head with it. <laughs> hey, I could. In all honesty, I gave up tools years ago after the fourth house. My wife wanted to remodel, and she took over the tools of the house when I told her I was done remodeling. So I don't use tools. Okay, I'm done with tools. So how are you going to put up this this matting for soundproofing in your uh, in your studio? Um, how are you going to put the sheetrock on the walls? Well, I'm just going to hang some stuff on the walls. How are you going to do that? With what? They have tape on the back. You just stick it on oh, the wall. Well, very well. <laughs> Touche, sir. <laughs> Command strips. <laughs> Won't catch me swinging a hammer. All right, who's next? Chet, why don't you go? It's all uphill from now. Okay, I I guess I'm going to have to move these into honorable mention. I, I've got, so I, I figured there'd be a lot of the same ones. I was wrong. You were, yeah, you, you were wrong, but we may have some that overlap. Number three, it, and it, if we do, then I'll just throw out the other one that I wrote down. And I'll throw, okay. Okay. Tape measure. Yeah. That, that, that is very frequently used. For a multitude of different reasons in my house. Like, at least once a week, I'm measuring something. You all right? I took a bite. I took a bite of that ruffle, and yeah. I got this instant, like, smell of perfume. I don't know what the... It's WNBA, man. I know. It's, it's so WNBA. weird. <laughs> like, smelling the bag. Sorry. Continue. So, tape measure. Funky butt loving. <laughs> Number two, a level. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, never going to use one of those ever again. Yeah. Not even for your pictures that you're hanging, even if they've got stickers nope. on the back? Just eye it. Man, I tell you what, I just don't know. Giving up tools. And number number one, I'm going to go ahead and say it because, uh, I mean, they're, I'm assuming you'd have this on there, maybe not. Cordless drill. Like, I actually do not have that one. Yeah, it, it, that. I... Go, go ahead, but I'll, I'll... But I'll tell you what I've done, and this is based off of your advice, uh, 100%, is, well, I already had a cordless drill, and I, I, got, I got a DeWalt, which was just, you know, it's Black & Decker, by the way. DeWalt is the Black & Decker's industrial name. Um, But, you know, good. it's got the lithium battery. I used to have a Craftsman that was, you know, it weighed like 17 pounds, and the battery was as big as a watermelon. And so when the lithium stuff came out, I finally broke down and got one a couple years ago. But then, based on your advice on their air pump, the Dewalt uh, that, that cordless battery powered, and it uses the same batteries. Yep. You know, I went and got one of those. I can't tell those you. things are freaking Dude, nice. It's unbelievable, uh, and and I wouldn't have it unless I had the uh, the, the cordless drill. Yep. 
to begin with because the, the 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 air compressor is really just like 99 bucks 90 bucks if you buy it without the batteries well i already have the batteries with the cordless drill so i mean it wasn't that much of an extra deal dude pumped up tires uh you set the psi you wanted to and you hit play and that thing just it'll ah, bike they're, tires they're really car nice. tires inflatable you know your pool pool float things whatever you want to do man at the, the joker will soccer ball it. football yeah, yeah i need i need one of those yeah, I'll, right. I'll give probably give it to my wife for a birthday present or christmas present <laughs> yeah, you're on to something she would love it all right they're super <clears throat> handy as long as i don't have to use it and they will air up a car tire like nobody's business yeah yep that's that's my three all right so what was that top number one again the cordless, cordless drill. Cordless drill. That does air pressure stuff. Yeah. No. Um, I have the DeWalt cord cordless drill and it comes with the batteries. Oh, and, and Matt, you use your Matt batteries. Was like, dude, on this the... DeWalt little air compressor that runs off of the cordless drill batteries is gotcha. awesome. All right. And so if I hadn't have done the cordless drill, then I wouldn't even be in the market to get the get that thing. And Matt gives good advice every now and then that I follow and I let him know when I follow it. So he this is the first I'm hearing advice. about it. This is a this is a hard headed first. <laughs> that's uh, that's going to be Hannah's Christmas gift, and she doesn't listen to this, so there we're, we're good. good. Golden. All, All right. right, all right. Number three, and I almost overlapped with you. You said cordless drill. Yeah. I said a screwdriver set. Dude, dude, look right here. Look at my other number three. Screwdriver set. I had word screwdriver set on mine. No, you had many. You had screwdriver. many screwdrivers. So this is for like serious work. You know, you've got an outlet. <laughs> you, 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 you know, you're not. You're not. Th that little mini screwdriver set ain't going to turn the knob. You know, turn the screw on that outlet. <laughs> but the reason I picked that is because not everybody has a use for a cordless drill. Yep, that's true. So that's true. You know, and you can put it. It makes things a lot easier, but you can still screw that. Yep. Screw into the you wall. Get a lot you get done. You can even do um, do some car, uh, minor car repairs. You know, change change yep. bulbs and some tail lights and whatnot. You need to start an old car. You just uh, you know on a yeah. solenoid. And, yeah. Yeah. You so, need to scrape some poop off your bottom of your shoe. Mm -hmm. Little flathead. Yep. Now my number two, we did overlap. I had tape measure. Okay. okay. That might take a while with a mini. So number two, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and switch. Depends on the size of the dog. <laughs> oh, I got a little dog now. I probably wouldn't take that long. All right, mini, switch mini, it up. mini screwdriver work for that. <laughs> mini screwdriver, mini turds. Yep. Uh, so instead of the tape measure, uh, my backup was um, a set of Allen wrenches. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they come in the little yellow thing that holds all the different sizes and you can go metric or whatever. Um, but those are always handy because those are the ones that you always need that you don't have. Yep. You're always looking for them. And next or. If you just buy a bunch of stuff from Ikea, you have a whole bunch of little ones floating around from the... That are never yep. the right size yep. for what you need at the time. And then, now that you've got your screwdriver, <laughs> you can make things really fast and hold the screw on one side, oh, hold yeah. the bolt on one side and use that Allen on the other because now everybody uses Allen wrenches or some sort of funky screw mm -hmm. setup so stuff doesn't get stolen. Yep. And... Number one, this one doesn't overlap. Would be a set of wrenches mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for that opposes for the for the bolts for the screwdriver or for the Allen set. Because Chet already said tape measure. I, I would have to have a tape measure. And level was a good call because I do use a level quite a bit for almost if I'm hanging anything or building anything. Yeah, you're making some calculations on uh, your angles on certain certain items. I mean, I got I got a framing square for. Some of that, we got to, and I got a, Is that the speed square? So I got a speed square and yeah. the framing square, and you can do a lot with both. Two ones. speed squares, and then I've got a framing square, and then I have a T square, drafting T square. Yeah, yep. massive. I got a T square, big old blue one. The uh, my wife has all that stuff. The a couple honorable <laughs> mentions here: <laughs> hammer, hammer, and right. so the screwdriver set. And a, a small hammer, not not even the sixteen ounce, like a small one, eight like a, ounce, like a tack hammer. Yeah, that should be in your junk drawer, and your you should have a junk drawer in your with kitchen or whatever. Tacks. Yes, you should have some brads, 
You should have some tacks. You should have your little bitty hammer in there. Mini screwdriver set with your mini hammer. And a mini flashlight. I'm not kidding. Like your mini screwdriver should be in the drunk drawer, not in your toolbox somewhere. You can throw some regular size screwdrivers in there too. Um, I've got a mini screwdriver set. Another in my, uh, my closet because it's too big for the junk drawer. Another thing that I, I use in um, it's a more, small junk drawer. So I have a, a circular saw skill. You know, it was the skill saw is what I grew up calling it. But sometimes I just got to cut one thing. Oh, the old hand saw. I've got I've got two of those, and I use them quite frequently. If I need just to make one cut on one board, like I'm not using electricity for this. You know, I typically so, go out and put uh, my tailgate down. You know, and then start sawing out there. And then when people are walking by in my neighborhood, I just look at them like, I bet you don't even have a handsaw. You know, <laughs> they're, they're, they're judging you. Yeah. It was so no, funny. I'm judging them. What are you talking about? Well, they're judging you. They're like, why is he not using a power saw? Because I have muscles. See, for, for me, like, I've got. What's wrong with this old guy? I've got the handsaw. And yeah. It was so funny because I, I have a, a cordless skill saw, circular saw. Yeah. And uh, I've also got a corded one. And the corded one. I are love you, are, my, are I don't you, have I, a quarter one. It's got a laser on that joker. It draws the line. It's awesome. On a handsaw? Yes. Really? Yeah, I, I was cutting some four by eight sheets of plywood the other night. Oh, it shoots a laser Dude. out the front. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. You know exactly where you're going. Like out, out four feet. You like oh, you can put a mark at the other end of the sheet of plywood and just hold that laser on that joker. I love it. Anyway, go ahead. You had your battery is that? powered. Ryobi. Ryobi. See, my now my cordless circular saw, I've got a Ryobi that is got that old battery pack like you're talking about that yeah. weighs you know a ton. And I've actually bought new batteries for it and it's still running. And so I had that out, and then I've got my big framing saw, mm-hmm. you know, that I use for big cuts and stuff like that. But we had uh, some uh pallets that we had for a fire pit. And we need to cut them down. And I was like, I'm not going to get that stupid thing out. I was like, Clara, get out here and cut these down with a handsaw. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then she's out there just sawing away and sawing away. And then uh, my my in-laws came out and was like, well, why don't you go get that circular saw? And I was like, she don't need no circular right. saw. She's got those muscles. It's, it'll be fine. She can, she can work a little bit. But she got about three quarters of the way through and I could tell she was getting a little beat up. And I was yep. like, all right, we'll go get the saw. Here's, you know, zip, let, zip, zip. Yeah, yeah, cut those down. That's awesome. And then whenever you get that handsaw out, you go, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, every time you got to do it. Yep. It's, it's almost it. like checking the straps. Like, yep, yep. that's not going yep. anywhere. It's required. I did use some straps yesterday. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good. Had to fasten some stuff down. Yeah. To, to Is that a tool? No. no. What, I mean, no, uh, what, what were you strapping down? An ice chest to a. Oh, one of those luggage rack deals? Yeah. Luggage rack. That's yeah. cool. Did you did you did you flip it and go? That's not going anywhere. When you when oh you, yeah uh, when it, ding, 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 what note yeah. did it play? You know, like, oh yeah, that's an yeah. E. Yeah, you have to do that. Like, every time. <laughs> you got to get to the C and then we're yeah good. yeah. So. All right, all right. Good word, Troy. Yeah. So the good word comes out of Mark eleven fifteen through seventeen, and the word is the just. So this is uh, Jesus entering the temple. With a whip of cords, he began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them and saying to them, Is it it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. So this is like one of my favorite passages of Scripture because it's just shows Jesus's other side, right? His his more uh, angry side, right? Because a lot of people, this talks about how society wants you to think that Jesus is was just a, a teacher of nice things. You know, he did good things. May he may have performed some miracle miracles and uh, done some cool things. Uh, but this really shows that. You can have some righteous anger, right? And uh, all of the... So one thing I love about it is because 
it says that he fastened a whip of cords, right? And to do that, you have to have time to think about something. Because it's uh, biblically taught that you should be slow to anger. Yeah. Like not quick, not quick tempered. Not quick. So I, I've always just pictured him like fastening it, just con- like thinking about what he's about to do. And, so not and, like and, and a, controlling his anger. Not like your mom just grabbing a switch off of a, a, a bush and ripping the leaves off real fast. Not, right. Not like that. Or dad like unbuckling the belt and <laughs> whipping it out. Yeah. No, not like that. He had uh, ample time to think about what he was going to be doing. Um, so then the, the rest of this talks about how, you know, there needs to be justice, right? Because only a fool would advocate for a system that, that doesn't have any justice. And, uh, sometimes justice can seem like it's not very loving, but if it's done in the right way, then in the end it is very loving and he talked about the, the two commandments last week, love God first and love your neighbor. Um, how can you not love your neighbor and not have justice with them? Yeah, because, I mean, what the what those people were doing, because you, you had sacrifices that you needed to make in the temple. Right, and they had and, pigeons and the... Yeah, so the, you didn't... People just didn't have all their own animals, not every everybody. So they would actually go and buy their sacrifice in the courts, and it's it's a captive market, right? There's very little competition, and people are going to have to buy your product to to follow their religion. In this case, so it's like I could charge whatever I want to charge. They have to make a sacrifice, so I I'm, I'm going to make make a killing here, and they were they were robbing. The, the people, they weren't being fair to them. I mean, they were taking advantage of, and the people that are, you know, buying pigeons and not bringing their calves, right? They're, they're poor people. Right. And they were getting taken advantage of at the church because they were, all they were trying to do was do what the, you know, what they were, scriptures had taught them to do on, this, on the, under the sacrificial system. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, for we, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. And so Jesus is love, and he's also just. Uh, he created the world, and he rules over it. And he'll, we will all be accountable to him. So, What, do you, what are the modern-day money changers? Um, but I mean, not that we would know for sure, but I mean, if we were going to speculate who, who's, who's, who's taking money from people that don't have it, get this Holy spring water to get your miracle. Yeah. I would say the joy. And when I'm done, I'm going to go fly on my private jet to my mansion. And because yeah. Jesus told me I needed this and I, 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 I can't talk to him on a, what was it? A, a, a tube, a, 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 a metal tube of demons. So I've got my own private jet so I can That's be Kenneth at, at 50,000 feet. I'm, I'm close to the Lord and we can yeah. talk. And <laughs> the Joel Osteen coronavirus. of the world. Yeah. <laughs> I blow. COVID-19. Oh, man. Yeah, dude's a nut. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not, not looked upon fondly by God. No. Let God be your justice. Yeah, don't go James Reese on people. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Or the gray man, you know. Yeah. Uh, so be, be slow. This is funny. I had a my dad built a uh, built me a two story me and my sister a two story tree house uh, when we were young, and uh, what got what gave him the idea is there's an old dump like it's just a road out in the country and that's where people just dumped a bunch of junk that wouldn't burn. So old washing machines and old whatever. And my dad, we, we just drive down through there and we'd uh, plank target shoot, you know, there's bottles all over the place, cans and whatever else. And that was just a little fun thing to do. And we were driving through, I'm, 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 I don't know, 10, 11, somewhere around there. And there's just like this pile of used lumber 
It was painted maroon. I'll never forget. Like what? You know, he's like, ooh. And he got to looking through it and was like, oh, this is a lot of good stuff here. Next thing you know, we're loading that stuff up and then haul it back to the house. Then he goes to the lumber store, buys a few more things because it wasn't a whole deal. And then built a, had enough and he built his two stories. It's huge. And right at one of our huge pine trees ran right through the middle of it. He built it around it. But anyway, on the, uh, on one of the boards that we got from the dump, somebody had carved in there, kill them all and let God sort them out. And <laughs> like it, it ended up in a place where I could read it. You know, he's like, Hey, just ignore that right there. You know, cause it's all like carved in it and we didn't have enough wood to go all the way around. He had to use that piece, you know, it's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Don't do that. And we're not advocating. No, that. don't do that. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.